What's up, nerds? Surprise! I said you weren't going to get another weekly reading wrap-up this year, but we came back home from Mississippi a little early. We got unpacked. I got all my laundry done. Sort of started cleaning house, and I decided, you know what? I want to go ahead and do a wrap-up because I don't want too much time to pass because I've started reading with a vengeance. Let's talk about what I've been reading because it has been, I want to say, at least two weeks since I updated. Don't quote me on that. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you might have noticed I have a new trend. I am trying to read a new short story every morning with my first cup of coffee. Of course, with the holidays, that schedule got a little bit interrupted, but I still managed to get a short story every day, except I believe on Christmas. Unless you count that I watched Brian Bowyer read his Christmas story on YouTube. So if you count that, then I'm good, I'm straight, and I will have that linked in the description box down below. It was a trip. So starting with the short stories that I read, I finished The Spontaneous Human Combustion Collection by Richard Thomas. If you love Stephen Graham Jones, if you love Stephen King, you will absolutely want to get your hands on this collection. February 22nd is when this one drops. I will have it linked in the description box down below. Absolutely loved this collection. I enjoyed every story immensely everyone there was one that i thought okay i finally found one that's not going to click with me because it's so rare to read a collection of short stories and like them all i'm usually about half and half or i like most of them but there's still a handful that i don't like especially when they're by the same author that is not the case there was one i was lukewarm on until the ending and the ending changed everything because i had missed what the story was all about. Totally missed it. I don't know if I needed extra coffee that day or if I was just not dialed in and not paying attention to what was going on in the story. But the ending changed it for me. I will be rereading this collection. In fact, I've already reread two of the stories because there are two stories that while the author said weren't connected, the way that I read them, it sounded like we got a perspective of a character later in life and then we got his origin story in a different story. And that's how I interpreted it. He said that was not his intention, but he kind of liked where I was going with it. Uh, I just cannot say enough good things about it. This collection came in and knocked what one wouldn't do down a peg. So it took the number one spot of my favorite collection for 2021. I just thought nothing was going to knock what one wouldn't do down from its number one spot. And this one snuck in like a dark horse and did it. I love this collection. Really enjoyed Richard Thomas's writing. Some of these stories were thought provoking. Some of these stories were fun to imagine how they might have progressed if they had kept going. They, they had an ending, but it was kind of open where I could continue forward with my imagination, just letting it take the reins as far as what could have possibly happened in the future of them. But I did do little mini reviews on my Instagram. If you want to check them out, I, you know, it's, it's so hard to review a short story because they're short and you don't want to give anything away. So sometimes I just used a quote from the story that I just felt captured the essence of the story. Sometimes I just told you how the story made me feel. And sometimes I was able to put down a few lines just talking about what the story was about. Love this collection, guys. Just absolutely loved it. Next, I read from Night Shift, Sometimes They Come Back. And this one was properly creepy. It's what I call classic king, meaning this is the type of story that people always think he writes. They think everything he writes is horror and they think it's that weird stuff, supernatural stuff like this. But this one for me, King dropped the ball as an author as far as getting logically from point A to point B. And I know logic concerning a supernatural story may not make sense to you, but this was one of his longer stories in this collection that I've read so far. He took a lot of time developing the character and developing the plot. What he did not do is provide a proper make sense ending. He had an ending and I'm fine with the ending, but we just kind of got there. It just was not properly fleshed out how the main character came to the conclusion of what he needed to do. It just happened and it's like, 
how are we going to go through this slow buildup of getting the backstory of what happened in the past to bring about what's happening in the present and then you're just going to wave your magic wand and say here you go buddy and done so that was just my one little nitpicking issue there and then i got back into kurt vonnegut's complete stories and i read the manned missiles that is in the war section of this collection and it was so sad it was so sad it's written in letter format and it's between two fathers the father of a Russian astronaut and the father of an American astronaut are writing each other back and forth about the deaths of their sons. Kurt Vonnegut just chose the perfect way to tell the story in letter format because it just made the impact so much greater telling it that way. You feel the emotion behind the words of these two fathers talking about their sons and how, and how important it was that the other father understood about who their son was and oh man so good so good guys if you are not reading Kurt Vonnegut what are you doing with your lives uh probably doing like I'm doing and reading fantasy I read Flamefall by Rosaria Munda finally so this one and I have a complicated relationship it had a lot of hot and cold moments it is YA and unfortunately, something that is kind of prevalent in YA is the miscommunication trope. It wasn't so much miscommunication in this installment as they weren't talking to each other and the assumptions they were each making because they weren't talking, like that got on my damn nerves. Oh, it got on my nerves. Every time that came up in the story, it was a very cold moment for me. I was so shut off and disinterested in it. I did not like it. Uh, I just did not enjoy that. But the rest of it, the other elements that take place, you know, the just the brewing of a possible second revolution or civil war, and then we find out where all of the nobles that escaped the first revolution were, oh. where the rest of them were murdered. And because of what happened at the end of Fireborn, they are all riled up. It's just an anthill that somebody kicked and that stuff was so good. The political intrigue and everyone choosing their side and just that sort of thing was so good. We got some really great character development in this one, but man, if we can just for that third book, not have the miscommunication or a lack of communication, I will be so happy. I can't wait for it. If I had that third book when I finished this one last night, I would have gone straight into it. This one was so good, so good, except for that whole little YA trope thing that oh, I just hate. You know, and it makes me wonder, YA, young adult, it really doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means. And a lot of us adults enjoy reading it. We just enjoy the lighter fantasy or science fiction reads. I am guilty of it. I love the, what I call fluff reads. My problem is, is if young adults are reading it and they think this is how they should be acting, like, can we get some YA authors to maybe write some, you know, some young people who communicate? <laughs> who don't do this. I could just feel that way because I'm the type of person that you never have to wonder where you stand with me. I will tell you. So don't ask me if you're afraid of the answer. I mean, if you're afraid to ask me, then you probably already know the answer. <laughs> Moving on, continuing into what I read. I read Moses, Man of the Mountain by Zora Neale Hurston. This one is right up there with their eyes were watching God. It is a retelling of the book of Exodus. But along with that retelling, we get the African American, the black folklore version of Moses. And guys, I gotta be honest, this Moses, love him. Huge respect for this man. He did not put up with anything. Now he did put up with the Hebrews because God called him to lead them and they were jerks and they just wanted to hang on to those dang slave shackles so hard and all they could do is complain all of the magic Moses worked. He delivered them from Pharaoh, he fed them, he took care of them, led them to the promised land and these guys just really acted like they wanted to go back to Egypt and just be slaves their whole lives. Oh man, but you know, but just, but the way he just would talk to him, like he may have catered to him a little bit, but he told him what he thought. 
He did not mince words and I loved it. I loved the magic, the folklore. And it just makes sense to me because we know in the Bible, Moses performs miracles and then Pharaoh's priests will come in and try to copy that with magic to an extent. Well, here it's just whose magic was stronger. And so because Moses was a magician, the priests were basically magicians. It just made sense. It was magician against magician. So it wasn't a hard stretch because we know those priests did those things in the biblical version. Guys, this is my favorite retelling I have ever read of a biblical book. And yeah, I'm going to say it. It takes over the top spot from Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, which is a retelling of the book of Hosea, but with a more focus on the romance aspect. Oh gosh, you know, a fantasy lover, you're going to love when there's magic involved. Fantastic book, beautifully written. I was highlighting like a crazy person the quotes that she has in this book. Definitely going to be a reread for me. So that takes care of everything that I read. Let's talk about what I'm still reading. I'm still working my way through the four novellas, the novels of Stephen King when he was Richard Bachman. I've read Rage, The Long Walk, and I'm currently in the midst of road work. I, I really enjoyed Rage. It's my favorite of this one so far. The Long Walk was good. And King did his research as far as endurance sports because the things that he wrote in here as far as the gentleman being able to do this long marathon, like the hints that were given to him when they were preparing for it are all correct. They're ones that I do for my running when I was doing triathlons. So I appreciate that he put a little bit of effort into that. The only thing about the long walk is there were parts that I felt were too long. Now, some of that slow build was necessary and I did enjoy but as this thing progressed, there were just some portions that I was like, that didn't need to be there. Let's get us on to the ending. Let's get to the climax of this. So for me, the long walk was a little too long. But as far as road work, I'm really enjoying that one. I was able to get my hands on the audiobook from my library. So I'm able to do that one as an immersion read. I cannot remember the name of the narrator for it, but he is really great. So, so that's a win for me. And then I also, once I finished Flamefall, I dug into Mike Shell's Idols Fall, which is the third book in the Iconoclast series. I'm very excited to get this one finished. I'm going to get it done before the end of the year. Sometime in January, Andrew from Andrew's Rizzardly Reads and I will be doing a live show with author Mike Shell. We're just working on planning on when we're going to get that done. I haven't gotten real deep off into this one yet. It feels like it picks up right where book two left off, which I'm very excited for because book two ended. I was not ready for it. I wanted more. So, uh, so I'm really glad that we literally just walk from one page to the next as far as book two and book three. So more on that next week. That takes care of everything that I read, what I'm still reading. What am I going to read next? Well, I expect Idols Fall to take me right up until January 1st. So that means next up will be some of my January TBR. So I'm going to be doing my short story reads from the complete stories by Flannery O'Connor for Flannery O'January hosted by Victoria from A Musical Bookworm, Christy Lewis, and Noah from Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse. Each co-host has a different challenge. I will have all three linked below if you're interested in joining us. So those are going to be my short story reads for January. And then the first book that I'm going to pick up for January is the final book in the First Law World. I am extremely sad for it to be over, but I'm also extremely excited to see what's going to happen in this third one. Guys, I love Joe Abercrombie. I'm going to be so sad when this is over. Although I believe he has another trilogy. So I'm going to have to get my hands on those and see what I think. But guys, it's time to see what the wisdom of crowds has for me. And then the other book that I'm going to start is In the Hills Above the Grist Mill by Calvin Ellis. That's one of my buddy reads with my friend Sharon Dwyer. I did pick that one up on Kindle. So I will, of course, flash the cover so you can see it here. And that will take care of my last couple of weeks of reading. What have you guys read? Did you read anything good over the holidays? Did Santa bring you any books that you want to share with me down below? 
I look forward to hearing from you guys. Happy New Year! The next time you hear from me, we will be in 2022. <sighs> I can't believe this year has already flown by and I thank each and every one of you for being here with me. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. Have a fantastic rest of your day, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you in the next one.